ಶ್ರೀಮತಿಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ವಿಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ ದೇಶದ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರವ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎರಡು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ರಿಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಟೂ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಯುವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಹೌ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅರ್ಜುನ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ವೈ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಪನ್ ಟು ಯು ಓ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ವಾರಿಯರ್ ಟಿಲ್ ನೌ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವೆನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಡೇಟ್ ಯು ಸೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ಓ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಕಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಕೌರವಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ they have done wrong and obviously you are on the side of the righteousness so you are very sure that you will also kill them you will win and you will prove to everybody of your mighty so krishna is telling that don't do things like this and this will lead to infamy you have been already very famous but what you are doing will make you in uh, like infamous and then here we see that very nice thing very important and very very basic thing about spirituality that the absolute truth is expressed in three forms as per the uh, requirement or you can say expectation of the seeker the person who is seeking god he can seek him in these three ways either you can approach him in a impersonal brahman form or maybe in a mix paramatma form where he knows something about him but not much thing about him and one where he wants to have very personal close relation it can be in the bhagwan form and bhagwan is very so last time is like one who is having all the opulences and we uh, glorify like meditate glorify on that aspects of the lord and we know for sure that this is his form this is his activities like his leelas his past times and what he does what he likes what he dislikes everything like that a very personal thing and for example we took also about the gulab jamun so gulab jamun smell only if you are smelling from a distance it is like a brahman and if you are holding it in hand it is like a parmatma realization but if you are actually eating and relishing it is like a bhagwan realization so the bhagwan realization actually in it already has a brahman and parmatma realization also and here you see that uh, prabhupad gives a very interesting example example of the sun which also has three aspects namely the sunshine the sun's surface and the sun planet itself now this example may be little uh, heavy for people who don't who have don't have the conception or don't have the understanding that the sun also is like a person the sun planet is like a person like a uh, indian culture we have a very well known thing that each planet is assigned as a person they are, they are literally a person so sun planet is like a sun god who is himself like going around and that's how we see the sun is actually moving in this universe so for the sunshine if you are just seeing the sunshine that is like a brahman realization and then we have a the sun's surface if someone sees the sun surface that is like a parmatma realization and then there is a one who knows directly that oh this sun is actually a person a sun god surya dev so that is like a bhagwan realization where he knows that this is a person is a personality uh, attached to that sun planet 
So one who studies the sunshine only is a preliminary student, and one who understands the sun surface is further advanced, and one who can send, enter into the sun planet is the highest. And ordinary students who are satisfied by simply understanding the sunshine, its universal pervasiveness, and the glaring effulgence of its impersonal nature, may be compared to those who can realize only the Brahman fear of the absolute truth. So those who only relate with the sunshine, that's it. So they are like a Brahman. Realized by people, and a student who has advanced still further can know the sun disk, which is compared to knowledge of the Paramatma feature of the absolute truth. And the student who can enter into the heart of the sun planet is compared to those who realize the personal feature of the supreme absolute. So this example can be also given, but <clears throat> the only thing is here, the very deep understanding is that sun planet is also a person. Which can be uh, too much of a heavy knowledge for people in the Western civilization. Maybe. So, therefore, the bhaktas or the transcendentalists who have realized the Bhagwan feature of the absolute truth are the topmost transcendentalists. Although all students who are engaged in the study of the absolute truth are engaged in the same subject matter. So, here we should also appreciate other people. We should know that other people they also, in some way trying to reach the same goal but we are uh, we can say the path may be different and it might take longer time if going via brahman realization and it may take little less time by paramatma realization but the shortest distance to reach or to attain the love of godhead will be bhagavan realization so here the sanskrit word Bhagavan is explained by great authority Parasar Muni, the father of Vyasadeva. The Supreme Personality who possesses all riches, all strength, all fame, all beauty, all knowledge and all renunciation. Okay. So, the person <coughs> who possess all of these five uh, qualities and not only possesses, but possesses in totality. Only that person can be termed as Bhagwan, and that is why the word Bhagwan is only used for Krishna, because Krishna only is, or Krishna can only claim that he has this, uh, the five opulences, in totality. Nobody else can claim that, and that's why the title Bhagwan is used only for Krishna. So whenever if we are even saying for demigods, like Indra Dev, Chandra Dev, or Lord Shiva even, if we say Bhagwan, then it is not considered correct, technically correct. We can say it, yes, but it is not technically correct. So there are many persons who are very rich, very powerful, very beautiful, very famous, very learned and very much detached. So people in the world we can see also they are very rich. And Prabhupada says in one lecture, someone may have $10, someone may have $1 million, someone may have $10 million. So someone can claim like this, but nobody can claim that I have all the riches of this world. There is no one. Even not the richest person currently on the world, currently we have. He cannot claim that he has all the riches of this whole world or even the whole universe actually. So when nobody can even talk about the universe. But Krishna can say that everything belongs to him. Because he is, a, he is the own creator and this is his your creation. So he is a, everything, whatever is there belongs to him. So Krishna can only claim. So only Krishna can claim this because he is Supreme Personality of Godhead. No living entity including Brahma, Lord Shiva or Narayan can possess opulences as fully as Krishna. Now here very important thing is also that here even Narayan is included in the Prabhupada, Prabhupada has included this. And as many of us might be knowing that or will be believing this, that people say actually that Krishna is an incarnation of Narayan. Krishna comes from Narayan. But uh, in a sense, the literature, the spiritual literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, clearly describes how uh, this creation is created and who is the creator and how different, different incarnations or different different demigods gods also assign different different positions within this uh, universal institution. 
like in a particular county or a particular country we have a parliament or in a county you will have a council so in the council there is a hierarchy of people assigned the positions posts different different posts so in the same way na like a government there are different different positions like uh, ministry of education ministry of finance ministry of external affairs everything is been assigned like that so same way in this universal constitution also uh, universal arrangement uh, the demigods who are there they are assigned the positions to so that this whole universe can run properly so the government is also formed for what the country can run properly so krishna actually we see he doesn't they have any position or post why because the simple example is that a king will assign all the posts and give to everybody but he will not keep a post to him he will not be like a uh, what you can say a public servant he is a public servant but he won't be having a post because he is the supreme person supreme authority so same way krishna also assigns the post so when he creates the universe he gives the creation he does the creation kind and then he says to oh uh, like he gives the energy or the impulse to brahma to create this universe and then he tells oh he takes a form of narayan himself and he gives him the position of maintainer and he uh, creates lord shiva or he expands himself again partially as lord shiva if need be then and he tells that okay at the end you are supposed to destroy the universe so in main thing like creator maintainer destroyer main thing like that uh, he puts a signs but he himself is his uh, golok vrindavan and he is doing his past times and enjoying like a king he is doing his everything like normal he doesn't have any duty to do and same way he assigns all the demigods like he assigns different different demigods like indra you have to be the king of uh, the heavens and maintain all the uh, demigods and there has to be a king of rain like uh, varun dev and then uh, vayu dev king like a maintainer or the king of the wind department like minister so he design, defines everything like that so a person like we see that uh, krishna takes a form of narayan for the maintainer but doesn't comes directly as krishna himself for the maintainer because he is always in his mood of supreme enjoyer and so one question can be also asked then why he comes for as a form of narayan and why he is like krishna and why is narayan different so an example example is that like a we may have a very big uh, like a minister let's say the prime minister of a country so the prime minister of a country he may be uh, he may be a big uh, like a politician he has to behave in a different way uh, not like a general public may not uh, talk or deal with people in a general way he may have his protocols he may have his cabinets uh, minister that he will be leading so that same prime minister he was behaving very professionally uh, in his office or his uh, minister people in the cabinet when he goes back home uh, he may be a father he may be a grandfather so if say he will see a grandfather then what will happen his grandson that may he may come and he may say oh grandfather i want to play now let's play so the grandfather will not say i am a prime minister you can't play with me i am such a big person of the country like a big position in the country i am not supposed to play like a uh, with you uh, he will just say yes yes let's go play and he will have lot of fun also with playing and while doing that he might also become like a he might become like a horse for him he may say oh i want to ride a horse and he will say come on my back and he may lean down walk on his uh, crawl on his like thing uh, knees and so we see that same prime minister who is sitting in the office uh, like prime ministerial office will be completely different completely professional and a general person who is seeing him there if he sees him here at home and he is walking on his knees with a small kid and behaving like a horse for him so that person may be bewildered so same is the thing that how krishna and narayan 
so person seeing him like this may be bewildered how they can be same or what is happening but they are actually the same person but narayan is like a person uh, krishna sitting in his office and maintaining the universe and krishna is like that grandfather who is very uh, very what you can say friendly with his grandson with his sons and his family and he is behaving very frankly and normally so that is how krishna takes roles and in terms of origins we say that ishvara parama krishna that is what is coming next ishvara parama krishna sachidananda vigra anadi radhir govind sarva karana karanam so this uh, was clearly says in the brahma samhita brahma is actually defining that the lord krishna is supreme god supreme personality of godhead and no one is equal to or above him he is primeval lord or bhagwan known as govinda so he is giving uh, names also that he can be called as krishna he can be called as govinda but then he says he is supreme cause of all causes so anadir adir govinda so he anadir adir means no end no limits no bounds and sarva karana karanam everything is because of him and that's how we understand that all incarnation all everything creation all this universe all this arrangement is actually coming from krishna so this is a direct clarification that krishna is the the first being and from him actually all the incarnations come and this is how also we get uh, like in the dashavatar dashavatar stotra it is described how that uh, first he came as a uh, kurma then like the successions are there varaha kurma Uh, and then he comes as narsinga and then he comes as like ram then krishna and buddha so buddha sharir also is described there so it describes the sequence but there you also we see that krishna comes like uh, sixth or seventh position seventh position so people may be confused that how come krishna is the origin and how come uh, krishna is coming like uh, in the sequence is coming in the Six, seven position in the Dasyavatar Shastra. If he is first, then he should be first. So that is what is described here. That he is the origin. Anadi Radhir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karana. So he is actually there first, and that is how all are coming from him. And then he himself also comes in the sequence, just to do his pastimes. And for this, a very simple example can be discussed uh, that when people. Uh, like talk the hen came first or the egg came first so there there is a very big confusion people have that which one came first you can say both came first but when it was created krishna created we don't know how krishna created but krishna created and that came first and so there it cannot be discussed but both are symmetrical like they are similar which came first it's no like needless to say if egg came first then it is also logical if the hen came first that is also logical so it's like a, a said like a dual uh, both the things can be right as well so that is a like a shastrik uh, injunction that sometimes both things can be right also from the people's perspective and another example can be given is that uh, like a uh, uh when you are lighting a candle like uh, let's say thousands of candles are there so if the one candle is lighting another one candle is lighting another so it is but obvious to understand that the someone lighted the first candle that's how the succession is going on if the first candle was not lighted then how the whole succession started so that is how we can also logically understand that uh if there is no uh first candle is not burnt someone has to burn it or some some medium was used to light the first candle and that's how then you can light all the succession uh, 999 candles and uh, same way one very simple example also can be understand from day to day life that is of a like a railway train a railway engine may be running and then after that we see all the bogies attached to it all the compartments different different compartments are just so if the engine is not there you can see other compartments all the bogies behind won't be 
able to move or follow. So that engine, that is the main uh, source of the movement, that is like Krishna. So Krishna actually starts everything and Krishna actually stops everything then again within himself and again he restarts. So it is said like uh, uh, within the D of Brahma, everything is uh, created, like a whole universe is created and by the uh, end of the day of Brahma, everything is again annihilated. But for us, it is like millions and millions of years. For human beings, it is like millions and millions of years. And so, there is different, different uh, perceptions which we can attend. And that is how now Krishna will be explaining. Because Arjuna will say, how come, how Krishna, uh, you are there and I am not there. How can you say these things? So Krishna, uh, Arjuna will actually question all these things from the point of view of a seeker like uh, uh, a general people like us. How come this is possible? And that we will see the answers to it now, uh, subsequently, uh, in the coming verses, in the coming chapters of Bhagavad Gita. So here it is very clearly described that Krishna is the supreme because no one can excel him. He is supreme person. His body is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. So, Sat, Chit, An, Ananda. So, Sat, <clears throat> Chit and Ananda, that is only for whom we can say like people also are used this Sat, Chit, Ananda, uh, things like for general people or general, uh, uh, what you can say, worshipables also. But that can only be used for Krishna because Krishna is only Sat, Chit, Ananda. Nobody else can claim that title. Uh, thing. And in Bhagavatam also there is a list of many incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Krishna is described as the original Personality of Godhead from whom many, many incarnations and personalities of uh, uh, Godhead are expanding. So same thing as we discussed, that Dashavatar is there and there are some avatars that is not even described in the Dashavatar, but Krishna comes like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that is called as Channa Avatar. That is described, Channa Avatar is described in the Bhagavatam, but not openly that this is Avatar of Krishna. But People who read uh, uh, read the Bhagavatam scrutinizingly, they understand. Yes, this is Channa Avatar and this is uh, expansion of Krishna. So here it is said very clearly in the Bhagavatam that Ete Chamsa Kalapumsam Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam Vriyanti uh, Rindriyani Vyakulam Loke Vriyanti Yuge Yuge. So Ete Chamsa Kalapumsam. So all list of incarnations of Godhead submitted here with either plenary expansions. Or parts of the plenary expansions of the Supreme Godhead. But Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is given by Bhagavatam 1.3.28. So, in this verse, we have to be very clear now that, uh, that uh, Krishna, why Krishna has to be taken the authority. Now, this has to be very clear because many people, they don't take Bhagavad Gita very seriously because they say, oh, Krishna is like a very mischievous. They say Krishna is very, uh, what you can say, and Krishna's activity are very confusing, misleading, and uh, all these things they say <laughs> to Krishna. They literally are offending Krishna. Very, they can get a very bad uh, sinful reaction for that. But Krishna doesn't mind because Krishna says, uh, uh, a very nice verse in the Bhagavatam. Stobanam, Helenam, Va, Parihasam, like Va. Like, uh, even if someone who is like giving bad words to Krishna, even if someone like making jokes of Krishna, or even if someone like, many times we see uh, devotees, temple devotees going from the street and people on the street saying, Oh, Hare Krishna people are coming, Hare Krishna people are coming. Oh, these people are Hare Krishnas, Hare Krishna, like this, they talk like this like uh, those who are like uh, general public. But Krishna says in this Bhagavatam verse that even if they are making uh, fun or if they are even if they are taunting and even if uh, by jokingly they say the name of Krishna, they still get the benefit. So that is the potency of the holy name. That uh, someone just by uh, like he is not even referring or calling the, like a uh, literally to Krishna, but he just referring to a someone going on the street who is wearing the Tillak, Dhoti, Kurta 
and weed bag. He's saying, oh, this person is Hare Krishna. What is this? This is Hare Krishna. So still that person gets benefit. And that is what uh, actually is the main essence of putting the tilak on the forehead. First thing is that we are declaring that this is uh, indication that I'm taking the lotus feet of the Lord, these two lines as the lotus feet of the Lord on my head. And then this is a tulsi on the lotus feet. So this is the tilak. But uh, that is one main thing. The second main thing is that by wearing this tilak, we actually give other person indication or any other person's remembrance of Krishna. They will remember that, oh, this is Hare Krishna. Means they will remember to Krishna. So, this is why we should also, people nowadays are very much hyped that uh, uh, all over the world, Hindus should, Hindus should wake up, Hindus should wake up. But that is one thing, but that is not the main thing. The main thing is that to remember or remind other people. Ourselves also we should remember that we are servant of Krishna. And we should remind other people that remember Krishna by seeing this. So if that person remembers Krishna, then that is a success. So we should somehow or other try to uh, include or involve other people in the service or the, in the remembrance of Krishna. So we'll quickly conclude this verse. Uh, so in, at the finally, he says, in the presence of Supreme Personality of God, Arjuna's lamentation for the king's men is certainly unbecoming. And therefore, Krishna expressed his surprise with the word Kuta. Where from? Like, what is going on? Like, till now you have fought uh, so many big, big fighters. You even, uh, uh, like, was ready. You fought with my brother, Balram, and you took my sister and you married uh, so Adra. And now you are like uh, behaving like this. Such impurities were never expected from a person belonging to the civilized class of men known as Aryans. So Aryan is like category of people who are like Kshatriyas or the fighters. So many times people in the Western world also, uh, like Hitler also referred <laughs> himself as Aryans. So it was very amazing that he was saying that we are fighters, we are like uh, holding, uh, we are saving the civilization, so we are Aryans. He used to use that word. So word Aryan is applicable to persons who know the value of life and have a civilization based on spiritual realization. Persons who are led by material conception of life do not know the aim of life. Uh, uh, life uh, do not know the aim of life is realization of the absolute truth, Vishnu or Bhagavan. So here again now, uh, another very important name of Krishna is coming, that is Vishnu. So Krishna uh, when people again say Krishna comes from Vishnu, not the other way round. So we should know again from that verse, Etecham uh, Sakalapumsa, Krishna to Bhagavan Sayam. So Krishna is the origin. So no matter how, we may be only seeing his professional version that Vishnu is the maintainer of the universe or Narayan is the maintainer of the universe. But that is his professional position. But his personal form is Krishna, so, which we can only see in his homeland, which is. Uh, Vaikuntha. Okay, so we should not be confused that who is supreme. Both are same, but the one is a professional form, which is much more like a professional and like we can say technical. And but one form that is personal and very loving and very much uh, like a, who is a, interacting with his devotees, no matter who they are. So that is Krishna form. So we should be always attached to the Krishna form. And therefore, they do not know what is liberation is, what the liberation is. Persons who know have no knowledge of liberation from material bondage are called non-Aryans. So here, Prabhupada is giving directly person who doesn't know what is the knowledge of liberation uh, from material bondage. Basically, he just giving very simple example that if you don't know what is the main thing to be done to get liberated from this material life, then you are non-Aryan. He said, those who know this knowledge, then they are Aryans. <laughs> directly saying this. So Arjuna, although Arjuna was a Kshatriya, he was deviating from his prescribed duties by declining to fight. The act of cowardice is described as befitting the non-Aryan. Such deviation from duty does not help one in progress of spiritual life. And now, this will be the main theme as we go see ahead. That is the Karma Yoga thing. People say work is worship, work is worship. So that is not the right attitude or right thing. Work done as worship is the right thing. But work is not worship. Like people, as we gave the example last time, 
some people may be their work is just to uh, rob people or to kill people they are like uh, like gangsters their 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 duty or their work itself they have taken is doing this or hitmen they just want to kill people but that work is not considered as worship but work which is done in an attitude of worship or work which can be offered as an offering to krishna or the whatever the uh, the benefits from the work or uh, the results from the work can be offered that can be only called as worship so the people are in big misconception that work is worship and they become workaholic they work day and night and then they say why am i not getting satisfaction so only work done as a worship or work which is in a mood of worship can only satisfy and for that krishna will now tell arjuna uh, what is the duty of each people like he then he'll tell explain the duty of arjuna that you are kshatriya you have to fight and even if you do it uh, uh, wrongly or you do mistakes in your duty that is fine but it is far more better than going and doing someone else's duty taking someone else's role and doing it perfectly so here he says now does it give and give one the opportunity to become famous in the world so if someone does like that he will not become even famous so krishna will actually tell uh, arjuna that go fight become famous become the leader of the world enjoy the world and then he says become a idiom of myself he says nimitta matra bhava savya sachi he says to him do all the thing become leader become famous many people say spirituality is not like that you don't have to hanker for things no but krishna says very clearly to arjuna go fight become leader become the uh, rule the world and then become what he finally says that become my medium that is very important thing also so there is no harm in becoming famous in all which we will see in the subsequent verses so krishna says very clearly that lord krishna did not approve of so called compassion of arjuna so this we also saw that compassion like a soldier uh, who is fighting for his country if he on the battlefield says oh what am i doing i am killing people this is not good so that compassion is uh, like bogus you can say so and that is use, useless for uh, for that person the battlefield the soldier his only duty is to kill and by doing that he is actually doing the good for the society so imagine killing can also be good but when he is done at that position and that situation but otherwise killing in general in the normal day to day life if someone is robbing someone killing that is not considered crime so i'll stop here if any question maybe one minute we can take that quickly okay then so we'll stop here then next time we'll continue from 2.3 uh i might also ask some feedback you might give it like personally or here as well in this meeting if you think i'm get going too slow then please uh, feel free to uh, stop me and tell that okay we can go faster but yes uh, this chapter second chapter is actually the whole summary of bhagavad gita and if we understand this in detail then it will be clear because this chapter actually gives the four main themes that is like first thing is very important that is guru the importance of guru then the other thing is about the i factor that is who am i krishna will be discussing that then and then t uh, he will be talking about two duties to arjuna two main duties for everybody and then a is like a uh, atma so it is like a gita acronym uh, which i learned from my no my superior so atma like a soul krishna will be discussing about the soul in detail at the end and that's how arjuna wakes up then finally and then he goes ahead to okay says let me ask more question then he is like okay let me ask and then i'll fight yes mata ji uh, prabhu ji two questions why are you starting with uh, chapter 2 and not uh, chapter 1 prabhu ji oh yes so actually we had we were doing this online session already before uh uh kind of like uh, i uh before we were actually moved to bristol uh, we were doing already things uh online and it was like started from covid time actually we had done a uh, lot many sessions we did first chapter and then so i thought uh, many people will be 
repeating them. But unfortunately, some people have now not able to join from Edinburgh. But uh, we have Minu Mataji from Aberdeen. She is still joining. So I thought I'd rather start from the second chapter only uh, so that people don't have uh, that. They will say, why are you starting again from first? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Second one, Babaji, okay. like, you know, it's a general question, like, you know, how to discourage kids from eating onion, garlic, everything, like, you know, if you go to school, there's school meal, and mm. it's onion, garlic everywhere, you know, it's like, yeah. small children, how to make them understand, like, uh, mm. what onion, garlic, like, if I give him packed lunches, he'll be like, he's eating that, he's eating baked beans, and baked beans has mm -hmm. onion, garlic, so yeah, I yeah. tend to discourage, you know, 